What's up, YouTube? Jeff back again. Today, another very exciting Samsung video for you guys. And today, we're going to be talking about One UI 7.0. Yes, I know One UI 6.1 hasn't even come out for some of you yet, but it's time to start thinking ahead to One UI 7.0, what Samsung might do. We already have the Android 15 developer preview number one from Google, so we know some of the features that are coming to Android 15. We can sort of talk about which features Samsung's probably going to incorporate into One UI 7.0. So that's what we're going to do today. Before we get started, I want to thank my son Jonathan. My three-year-old son gives us some dinosaurs to hang out in the video. We got the T-Rex. We've also got the Carnotaurus over here. Always appreciate him. Also, I want to remind you guys, if you want to save some money on your wireless service, you can do so by switching to my friends and partners over at Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile has premium wireless starting at just $15 a month. And right now, one of their biggest deals of the year, they have every single one of their plans for just $15 a month which means you're actually getting 50% off of the unlimited plan. So just to remind you guys about all the different plans, I've talked about them before. They've got a five gigabyte a month plan, 15 gigabyte a month plan, 20 gigabyte a month plan, and the aforementioned unlimited plan. Right now, all of them are $15 a month, so you can get that unlimited plan for half off. Like I said, $45 upfront payment required. This, of course, is for new customers. All their plans come with limited talk and text, nationwide coverage, mobile hotspot included as well. One of the things I love about Mint is you can either get an eSIM if you want to get the SIM right away, it's right there. Uh, your phone qualifies, just S24 devices, S24 Ultra, they all qualify for eSIM. Or you get a physical SIM, they'll send out a SIM tool, pop out your old SIM, pop in the mint SIM, and let the savings begin. I've been using them in the Phoenix, Arizona area, so has my family for the last year and a half. We love the service. If you guys want to get on this limited time deal, go to my link, trymintmobile.com slash springer. It's also in the pinned comment description. Sign up today. Like I said, it's a limited time offer. The unlimited plan for 50% off. Absolutely amazing deal. You guys should give them a try. I think you'll love it. We do appreciate Mint for being partners on the channel. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about One UI 7.0, which will be based on Android 15. We don't have any exact confirmation of what's going to be an Android uh, 15 One UI 7.0 build, but we do have Android 15 Developer Preview 1 from Google. There's some features that have been confirmed for that. So I wanna talk about which one of those Samsung will probably incorporate into One UI 7.0, and also some things that I would just like to see in general. So as usual, I have a little keep document to talk about this. Let's talk about some of these features that are already confirmed to be inside of Android 15 from the developer preview. These first two, notification cooldown and sensitive notifications. So now when you go to your notifications, one, you're gonna have a sensitive notification feature that will allow you to basically blur out or censor some of these notifications like two-factor authentication codes so that other people can't see those uh, while you're using your device because some of those, of course, could be a security risk. And then you'll also have a notification cooldown period where you'll be able to go into a particular application, like for instance, this one from Twitter, and go into the settings. And once you go into the settings, you'll be able to turn off notifications for that particular app for a certain amount of time. You'll have a notification cooldown period. Now you can already do this with certain routines on Samsung Galaxy phones. This would just be built into Android itself. And I would imagine that Samsung would probably incorporate some version of these features into One UI 7.0. Again, these are all based on past history of kind of what Samsung might use that Google has in the original version, but not guaranteed, as we know. Up next, Bluetooth pop-up dialog. So the Bluetooth pop-up dialog, basically, we already know. If you go into the quick settings, you can already long press up here on the Bluetooth settings to get right into the Bluetooth menu. So you've got all of your quick settings up here. Just long press on Bluetooth. It'll give you this pop-up right here. So the Bluetooth dialog pop-up would allow you to get that information in the entire list, things like that, as soon as you connect any Bluetooth device. Now, of course, some Bluetooth devices already do this, but this would make it a robust feature that would be built into the Android source code. And it's something that I could definitely see Samsung including in One UI 7.0. Next is battery health percentage. Now, if you follow tech in general, you know that the iPhone has had this for a while, and I have an iPhone 15 Pro right here. So I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. If you go into the settings on the iPhone, you can see that there's this thing called battery health and charging. So if you tap on that, it's going to show you the maximum capacity, and then it's also going to show you the current health. So that 100% basically means that right now, it has 100% of its original capacity for the battery. As it degrades over time, that's going to go down, which makes sense, and then you'll be able to see, like if you were selling this as a used phone, you could show that battery health information to someone. And if the battery health is better, that might get you a better sell price if you're selling your device. So I definitely could see Samsung incorporating that. That might even be mandated by Google to be included. The next feature, the next two features are two that are perhaps the most overall exciting to me. The first one is app archiving. So if you go into the Play Store and you check out any app, not just Google Chrome, but if you check out an app, Let's just use an app that a lot of people are gonna use. 
Let's check out Uber. So if you look in Uber and you go about this app, look at the general size of these applications. They're getting massive. This is almost 100 megs here. Uber is a pretty common app. It's not even a game. These apps are getting really large. And if you use them, the data that they take up uh, on your device with all the data in the app can be 300, 400 megs. So if you have apps that you've not used for a while, app archiving is going to allow you to actually basically compress those apps and store them away until you do need to use them. But as the minute that you want to reactivate them, all of your information will be there. You won't be logged out of your account. It's not going to be like clearing the cache. So this app archiving feature is very compelling. It hasn't yet made its way into developer preview, but Michelle Rahman, who covers a lot of great stuff about Android, you should definitely follow him. He posted a short video on this uh, the other day of what it's going to look like. And I'll definitely drop that link in the pinned comment description if you guys want to check it out. App archiving could be a really, really big deal. The other one that gets me really excited is Powered Off Finding API lets you find devices even when they're off. So right now, of course, we know that Samsung already has something similar to this where you can, if you have the Galaxy Tag network, like you have Smart Tags, things like that, Smart Tag 2, uh, you have the ability to find certain devices even when they're not on. Apple has this as well. This would make it universal for all Android devices and maybe even some lower end you know, devices from manufacturers like Samsung would allow you to find these devices even when they are switched off. That would obviously be huge for if you lose your phone. Uh, you can do this with the Android network as well as the Samsung Galaxy Find network. That gives you even more devices to help you find your lost smartphone or other device. The next rumored feature for Android 15 is private space. And of course, a lot of people are gonna say, well, Samsung already has a secure folder. And from what we've seen here, this is actually just kind of a ripoff of secure folder and they're just going to make secure folder built into Android. What's interesting about this is, I think Samsung has a great opportunity to make their version of secure folder even better. Because I've talked about this, a lot of the Chinese phones like Xiaomi, Huawei, they have a completely separate, you know, like everything, apps, wallpaper, everything. You can have multiple different accounts on your device that give you a private space feature, but secure folder doesn't really take it to that level. And it looks like the one in Android 15 is gonna be very similar to secure folder, where you can have apps that you've locked or things that are in the secure folder with certain accounts, but you won't have an entirely separate login. On the Xiaomi phone, for instance, you can have one fingerprint that gets into your main device and the other one that goes into your private space, and then it shows you different versions of the apps or your apps are not signed in. Flossie Carter talks about this all the time. He calls it thought protection, which is a great phrase that he coined. I'm not gonna call it that because I don't know, it doesn't sound as good coming from me, but it's a very cool feature and it's not quite the same as Secure Folder. I'd love to see Samsung expand Secure Folder and make it something more like the true private space on those Xiaomi Huawei phones. The next one is voice activation feature for digital assistants. This one's pretty simple. Basically, if you have multiple assistants on your phone, you'll be able to use voice activation for all of them. Now, this is one that I don't really know if Samsung will incorporate because of course they want you to use Bixby. Google is trying to make it so that you can use any voice assistant like Google Assistant, Bixby, even like ChatGPT or something like that, or Cortana. You'd be able to use a wake up phrase with any of those in Android 15 source code. The next one is AuraCast Focus, audio sharing to nearby Bluetooth LE audio streams. This is a huge one. Uh, I have the brand new Sennheiser Momentum 4 wireless buzz that have AuraCast in it. So I'm really hoping, I, I don't see why Samsung wouldn't, bring this to the Samsung flagships. It'll allow you to join AuraCast broadcast. Right now it's in its infancy, but the ability to join these in like crowded areas or when you're going on a tour is gonna to be huge in the future. Everyone's gonna be carrying around their earbuds and then AuraCast will probably take the place of microphones eventually. These last three are my personal wants. So the first ones were Android 15 features that have either been confirmed or rumored that we might see Samsung implement. These are three that I really wanna see. The first one is charging animation options. So Samsung has the same exact charging animation forever when you plug in your device to charge. It's looked the same for years and years and years. All of the Chinese manufacturers have different animations. You can go into the settings, you can choose those animations, and there's a lot of them to pick from. For Xiaomi specifically, I've been using the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. It's really fun to change those up. I'd love to see Samsung do that. The other thing is, good luck integrated into One UI. I've been saying it for years. I want Samsung to bring a lot of the good luck functionality and build it into One UI properly instead of making people download a region specific app. Some of the features that I would love to see come to One UI proper is the vertical app drawer, first of all. 
which is building the home up. They still haven't brought it back, which is very annoying. It's supposed to come out with One UI 6.1.1, but they could just put that into One UI 6.1.1, and then you wouldn't have to go in here and you wouldn't have to download home up and turn it on in there. It'd just be building the operating system. I don't know why they can't do that. Keys Cafe for customizing your keyboard effects. That should be built into the operating system completely. Pentastic for customizing your S Pen menu should be built in. Theme Park, the ability to do custom icon packs, change your quick panel. All that stuff could be built into One UI. You could hide it behind a couple of menus so if people don't wanna get confused by it, you really gotta know where to look. Samsung does that all the time. I don't know why they haven't done it yet. I've been saying it for years. I hope they'll finally listen. Anyway, that's One UI 7.0, Android 15 in a nutshell. What I think will come based on Android 15, uh, developer preview one leaks, and what I would like to see happen from my perspective. Let me know what you guys have for your wish list, what you wanna see. Again, if you guys wanna save some money on your wireless, check out my partners at Mint Mobile, try mintmobile.com slash Springer. Limited time offer, you get 50% off that unlimited plan, just $15 a month right now. Appreciate you guys checking this one out. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.